Yeah. Whoa. Bless you. <laughs> How come we don't say bless you when people fart? An excellent question. Like, it's a sneeze, pretty much. I mean, it's more like a burp, but... Do you say bless you when someone burps? No, I usually just give them a crisp, clean high five. Mm. I usually oh. give them a number, like, to score it. Ooh, that's good. <sighs> but, like, what's the equivalent... If you have a burp, if you have a sneeze and a burp, and you have a what and a fart, like what's the equivalent? No one. Wants These to are the know. questions no I. One wants to know I'm that. up till three in the morning thinking about in no. my bed at night. I was gonna say this is Luke's pondering. <laughs> you, guys, the things I ponder, you have no idea. Oh, what is up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome back to another episode of the What the Fanboy Show. Today we'll be talking about Twisters, we'll be talking about The Acolyte, we've got new trailers, um, stories, we're going to kind of give a mid-year update on our you know favorite movies and things, so um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll just jump right in and get started. That's, Hot wh- show. that's why you guys were messing with those. Oh, good to no. know. He just said that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's totally <laughs> off the cuff because no. because we were ta- because we were talking about. it. I was like, oh, it's, now's it's, a you know, great it's a great time, topic. Great time, a great, for it. great time for it. Great time for it. So Tyler, you might want to think about your list. Obviously, we're going to need your top ten in about three minutes. Because so. <laughs> we're going to get through reviewing Twisters and the Acolyte in three minutes. We could. We could. We, but we, but won't. we won't. No. Um, <laughs> no, what? I take it back. No, we could. <laughs> I could. I got too many things to say. Luke, I know you got things to say, but you also are the keeper of the list of new trailers. So will you start us off with what new trailers came out this week? Um, I didn't watch this one, but if you want to go watch it, um, go for it. Uh, there was another Beetlejuice 2 commercial. A commercial. Uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Super, what am I saying? I'm still thinking about sneezes and farts. <laughs> trailer. <laughs> trailer. There's a new Beetlejuice 2 trailer. Yes. I didn't watch that one either. I'm just, I'm going to see it. If it's the so, one that was in, there was one that was in front of, like, Despicable in, Me. Was there one in front of Twisters? I don't think there was one. I was one pretty late, twi- so. Twisters. There may have been. I don't know. You went late at night, too. I did. It, and was, it was an incredible uh, decision. If it if it was the one that played in front of uh, Despicable Me four, I just I just need to say real quick, I went to a it ten, didn't change my mind. I went to a ten fifteen showing last night, and I haven't been to a movie that late in forever. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw one trailer, and I was maybe like t- five ten minutes late. Do Which they is play less. They trailers? play less trailers at night. <laughs> like, all right, this may entice me. I'm, to I'm, I'm willing to start a hypothesis <laughs> and an experiment going forward. Because, like, normal the movie showtime was ten fifteen. Yeah, and the movie was going at ten twenty five. That's crazy. Ten minutes is all. I think they were going before. Wow. I think they were just like, hey, just start let's just up. get it going. Yeah, because like you get to a movie on time now, and you're not watching your movie still for thirty minutes. Can we can we actually list the start time? Not yeah. the yes, that'd be great. Not the ad start time. The trailer. I say is no. Consistent. I say no, because people still show up late. That's true. And once the movie started, I get tired of people trying to find their seats. So don't say when the movie starts. Just play less trailers. <laughs> start them earlier start them five even, minutes before i don't even the mind the trailers stop playing all the ads in between the trailers but just play random movie trailers that are coming out soon yeah there's like TV a whole spot business version, to so they're it family that friendly. clearly works so well since half of the theater chains of yeah bank bankrupt yeah. and whatnot so. anyway there's another beetlejuice 2 commercial cool uh, commercial trailer this is going with it now <laughs> what's next um Probably the most anticipated trailer of the century. Oh. Even though this movie has already came out. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a trailer for Rebel Moon, the director's cut, chapter one. A no. Ch- a cup of chal- a chalice no, no, of blood. No, no, just chalice. Just chalice. Not a chalice. Just chalice. Chalice of blood. 
slash chapter two, the Scar Giver. I don't remember. I don't remember, they the, call it. I don't remember the chapter two. Title. All the titles are bad. <laughs> um, but this is both of these movies are bad. <laughs> this is heralded as Zack Snyder's true vision for the Rebel Moon franchise property property i have no doubt that even though this it's totally will, fabricated <laughs> this will feel um like a more of a me like especially part one i remember when we reviewed part one it's it's bad for many reasons but one of the reasons felt like it was just act one of a movie N- not even act one and part of act two it was like it was just, it just felt like act one and just by stuffing more things in it i think it will feel fuller not better just oh there's like it feels more than just the first part of a movie um that said i do think there's some cool shots in this trailer i don't think it really compels me to watch it though i could not be less interested in something (laughs) than i am in this this whatever this is Um, i didn't even watch the second one I'm not gonna oh yeah, watch you it. never watched nope. this. Don't Gargiver, care to. Did you? <laughs> Don't care to. I like. Are we gonna end up watching this, Brett? Absolutely. Can we, can we just watch this one together so yeah. I don't go crazy? I think so. I think that would be. I fun. fell asleep during the first one. I just. I don't even need to watch the second one, do I? I could just watch this one. You should just watch Seven Samurai. Well, yeah, that's a way better option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or even um, was the Western one? Uh, uh, Magnificent, Magnificent Seven. Magnificent Watch the original Magnificent Seven. Also fantastic. Yep. I know you've so. seen the. Yeah, I've seen the new Denzel one. Denzel one, so. Yeah. But um, no, like this. Thumbs down. This sucked. I'll I just. The the fabricated. We're in. I feel like we're in a lot of the. This was staged talk because of, world events and also moon landing anniversary. Um, the, the Snyder cut for Justice League was like a passion project for his fans yeah. and him. Like and him, it yeah. took a lot of work to get that thing out. He did, he did not get to finish, finish movie, the yeah. mo- original yeah. Justice League. So it made sense, I think, to, for yeah. him to come back. It's and still the, a way too expensive of a process. Yeah. But, but like it's crazy that that happened yeah and netflix and snyder it just feels like they're trying to replicate that and it just doesn't work it feels like barbenheimer it's like this is a great cinematic moment moment in history for fans Mm -hmm. movie fans and the people that worked on those movies and now like every once in a while we have like oh it's shrek and saw or whatever came out yeah. Last year was like we can do it again. It's it's not gonna work. It, it's never gonna work like that again. And so it just to to just describe it as this is Zack Snyder's true vision. It's like why why not just do that the first time? It's been said to death multiple times. We've said it to death multiple times. I just I don't understand I don't what they're thinking. I don't get it. Like why i, I kind of made this joke but like netflix is willingly throwing themselves under the bus to say that this is his true vision basically saying well we had notes for his other vision so we needed to do that one so he could do this one like i don't know i it's think just they're weird. just there isn't they're just leaning it's, into it. it but it's the i the controversy is not actually big enough to affect them right it's and I the mean, movie wasn't good enough <laughs> well yeah no i think you're right i i, I think that at best, it's a chance to get it up on a screen, you know, on someone's screen is like, this is new, and it's branded different, and it has a new title, and someone might, who may have passed over a child of fire, may be like, oh, child of blood, that sounds, like, right, there's a, there's a marketing right up a reason for doing there. it, I just don't know if it's a really justifiable from, like, a return on investment <laughs> perspective. Yeah, and I don't, just to clarify, That's I don't think there's controversy. Differences. I think it's just them being stupid. <laughs> it's fine. I don't. Know. I don't. Dis- I don't. Disagree. We can turn it into a controversy. <laughs> I'd rather not. I don't like. I feel like I've given this movie more energy than I care to. Honestly. Well, so I'm just like. I may be sideways thumb on this trailer. It didn't really move the needle for me, but I do think there's potentially something that 
good that could come out of it. Yeah. Both these guys are thumbs down. Totally There's naked that. people in it. And slit throats. So if that's your thing. You know what drives me crazy ever since I've seen a Zack Snyder movie, though? And I've told I've talked about this with you. I don't know if I've ever shared it on here. I cannot stand his CGI blood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. cannot stand it. <laughs> ever since I saw 300, it's like... Are we trying to make it look bad? Well, and it's weird <laughs> in this now, seeing, you know, the first two Rebel... The, the versions, the PG-13 versions of Rebel Moon, where it's like, oh, there's going to be so much blood there. Like, yeah. you can just tell that it's like, okay... When they walk in a room covered in blood, and there was no <laughs> blood in the scene at all. But there's, like, actions where it's like, even in a PG-13 movie, you would expect a little bit more of something there, and it's just like, well... And then you, we'll see, you know, we've see we see it in the trailer a little bit, but you, I just want to watch Brett get plastered watching this movie. Nope. I would join for that. Oh. I'll drive you home. That's the things I do for love. (laughs) (laughs) Um, we also watched another trailer just a second ago, a different man. Yeah. Yeah. Sebastian Stana had a weird face. And then he didn't. And then he didn't. But then he did again, kind of. Whoa. I'll thumbs up this. I think this looks kind yeah, of interesting. I will too. I, I it's A twenty four. They have a pretty good track record, right? Yeah. True. Very <laughs> and it true. Just, it just looks different. I don't know. It doesn't look like anything else that's being made right now. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah. I'm not saying it hasn't been done. I'm more so just the slew of movies coming out right now, this is very much in its own lane. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was another trailer. I didn't watch it, but I feel like I know everything about it. <laughs> I also did not watch this trailer, if it's what I think it Deadpool is. Deadpool yeah, Wolverine? Yeah. Just spoiling everything in their movie? Of course they are. Yeah, that was disappointing to see. I mean, I was spoiled for me before I watched the trailer. because I haven't that's even how, watched the trailer. That's how the internet is. But um, this trailer was a, another sideways thumb for me. I don't... It didn't do anything. Um, it doesn't feel like it's... You know what I'm excited for with this movie? <laughs> for it to be over? And I feel like this has probably been said, and it, somebody's going to be like, yeah, obviously, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like with Hugh Jackman being in it, there's going to be so much more depth to a character in a Deadpool movie. Mm. We're like, it's kind of been there. Yeah. In the first two. Like, there's moments. But those movies are mainly fun, funny raunchy yeah um but like him being there and now obviously should i say it it's in the trailer does tyler know yeah oh, okay since daphne keen is confirmed to be back right right um i feel like that's gonna add a little more weight to his character and i think that's really good i'm not expecting that from the ryan reynolds side right but i hope that if the hugh jackman side can bring it then i hope they're able to lean I'm into that though and not because you talk about how in Deadpool 1 and 2, there are those moments. It's just, it's always 100% of the time undercut by a joke. Like, it, it can't just let itself be serious for a minute. For more for more than a minute, I guess. Like it, it, And then it's got to do the funny thing. And I would, what I would hate is for Hugh Jackman to be able to bring some of that in, but it just constantly being undercut. You might be prepared to hate. Oh, no, no, I am. I'm 100%. I was talking with, uh, well, you know, Alex. I was yeah. talking with Alex uh, about my I, what I'm anticipating, and I'm, I'm going to go in with open mind. I'm anticipating uh, giving this movie, like, a two stars. I mean, like, I had a fun time, but it's I'm a two-star s- movie. Did he tell you he's seeing it with me? No. <laughs> we don't have tickets yet. I'm actually not sure when I'm going to get to see it. I have plans that weekend. I didn't honestly even know tickets were on sale. Well, it's, it's coming out next week, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> or like this week. I did. Four days. <laughs> I can't. I don't know movie dates anymore. Yeah. Mainly with the ones that I'm not as enthusiastic about, but. That's fair. So, it's Olympic time. It That's is. where my brain is going. Yeah, fair enough. Thanks for fair enough. Friday. Friday. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's go. Was there any other trailers? Those are all that I had. I don't have any more. I don't think so. All right. All right. Well, then we can move on over to our review of Twisters. The storm's here tonight. They're nearby. 
It's perfect. It's not raining here. But it was also on the night that Steph and I went. Um, they're like was it? big storm clouds all around. Oh, really? So, yeah. Hmm. Saturday? Was that Saturday night? I don't remember storms. I think it was Saturday afternoon. There, there weren't any super near us. Just big clouds. They were just big clouds. Oh, okay. And it was like, ah, oh, this is fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You don't have the the Daisy Edgar Jones superpower to look at a cloud and be like i know it's ex- <laughs> i do not i do not have that super ability bro that stop sign was wiggling we need to go this way <laughs> <laughs> over in the over in the chat baroque says i'm so excited to see this in 40 um take ibuprofen before you <laughs> go and uh maybe a neck brace just in case i, I need wichita to add a 40x i'd like to experience it at some point and this would be a fun exploration movie. place has the used to have those chairs i don't know if they still do but yeah. they didn't play movies they just had their little right. rides yeah but um what did you think i love this movie <laughs> this movie is so much fun um look it's not like anything great or amazing but i think there's a ton of chemistry there um we recently just watched the original twister um it does the thing which is we're going to hit all of the same kind of story beats it's, it's formatted very much the same as twister i think it does everything twisters do- twisters does everything twister did but better in i think a, it did in a more modern sense and it just feels good i think it did everything twister did exactly the same that's fair. <laughs> that's fair <laughs> um i too thought it was a lot of fun i don't think i'm as high on you as high on, on it, it as, as you me. yeah um i do not think there was a lot of chemistry there i think the girl is not good daisy edgar jones i don't think she's good um what is she from she was in she was the per- the the girl that was killed in the mormon show with a- andrew garfield oh that's a good show that was a great show. But, um, like, there's mo, like, in the normal moments, she's okay, but she doesn't really need to be doing anything much there. In the moments where she needs to be scared, I think she's great. Mm hmm. And then there's the moments where, like, she's supposed to be sad. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, um, I do I, think there's, I, an, I do think there's an anchor because I do think there's a hierarchy of who is, who is best with chemistry. Like, I think Glenn Powell holds, the chemistry bucket yeah. like everyone's Powell's just, good he's just dipping like everyone's dipping in and like pulling like when they're when anyone is acting with glenn powell i'm very happy i do think you're right especially when um daisy edgar jones and who's her friend anthony ramos anthony ramos i don't think they have great like they were pretty their relationship is pretty tense already and yeah it just, i just never really bought into it um but I, but I enjoy, especially when the three of them get together. And again, I think it's because Glenn Powell's there, and he is literally just there to be a little thorn in everyone's side. I'm going to be honest, I, I wanted a Glenn that. Powell, Anthony Ramos, buddy cop, tornado <laughs> wrangling movie. Heck yeah. <laughs> like, I would have loved if it was just, like, Anthony Ramos was the YouTube guy, mm-hmm. and it was them going off and doing this thing. Yeah. Something goes wrong, blah, 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 blah. And, but, like, he's the... He's part of the profiteering group, even though he might not realize it at first. The tech, it's the the tech bro group. Yeah, tech bro. Which was in the carry always. Was, yeah, <laughs> he is that character. I do the thing I do like. I'd say more in this one is that we get to spend time with that group. Yeah, like in the original, it's like carry always <laughs> is clearly a bad guy for some reason they are just the antagonists <laughs> and david no david corn sweat is that in this movie <laughs> he's Love it. so good i he's good at being like i think he's gonna be a great superman he's, got, he's, he's not got, good at being a he's got douche. three little lines and i think he's i think he's fine i thought he was good i don't know he was like I we don't care about the people and i was like <laughs> okay buddy I didn't even know he was in this movie until I think last week he was posting like promotional stuff and I was like, wait, he has what? like six lines. <laughs> yeah, he's very minor role. It's funny. Um, yeah, I I really just thought the acting was kind of all over the place. Thankfully, this is not why you see this movie. <laughs> yeah, true. 
True. So, like, it kind of goes into the back burner. Um, the three things that I probably thought were the most important, I think they really nailed, mm-hmm. which was the t- tornadoes. So, like, yeah. the cinematography, I think, is great. Yep. I think the CGI is really good. Mm-hmm. There was never a moment where I was like, what? what's going on there? Yeah. Um, what a, sorry. What a bizarre directing portfolio for this guy. Yeah, he directed Minari. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Minari, Great film. The Mandalorian, and Twisters. And then he's got a bunch of like smaller stuff. Yeah. Um, what, what a bizarre <laughs> shift from Minari to I think this. he's got a skeleton. I think he's got a skeleton crew episode, too. Yeah. Nice. Coming up. He's everywhere. Um, and the other thing I think they nailed and these three things just kind of go together is the spectacle of it Mm -hmm. was great um the tornadoes felt huge they felt dangerous yeah it kind of also leads into a con i have Mm. a nitpick um um but yeah like they're just when the town is being destroyed by a tornado you're like pretty powerful tornado and the truck hits a wall and you're like "Mm, it's a pretty powerful tornado (laughs) yeah they do a really good job of making tornadoes feel scary yeah they look scary they feel scary i think the act they sound scary they sound scary the um they do a um i think and this goes in leads into the fun of it i think they do a good job of getting your blood flowing during the chases i think the music choices are great they get you like oh because i'm not like a, i'm not like a country music guy i don't like country music but like every time a country music song came on in this i was like all right let's go baby <laughs> tornado um and that leads into typically you know they're they're hunting they're hunting down a, a tornado and then you know shit hits the fan because of course it does yeah. it's a tornado and it's a movie about tornadoes so saying, of course you gotta have a movie yeah because we don't fully understand tornadoes so <laughs> or do we um, i also appreciate it i i felt like they did a good job of um talking about tornadoes and weather and not dumb it like i'm thinking i'm gonna disagree with you on this it it, it was I liked that they said things that I I didn't I didn't completely understand, but I could understand conceptually. Like it felt like they were talking in weather lingo, and I just didn't get it because I'm not that smart. But they didn't necessarily be like, oh well, it's when the they do this occasionally when especially when they're talking about the like the updraft and the moisture and things. But at some points, it, it did feel like oh these are just people talking in their kind of native language of weather speak. See, I disagree. Okay. I feel like a lot of times they're using big words to sound smart. To sound smart. Whereas in like, they're talking about a tornado and updrafts and moisture and big long words. It's probably Latin. And it's like, can I get a wind speed? Mm. How how fast are we blowing here? Because I can understand that. Yeah. And they're talking about like, oh, the F scale Fujita scale doesn't it's not about wind speed or um how big a tornado is it's about damage and it's like i think those are relative buddy <laughs> <laughs> like i don't want to put on a meter a large meta, meteorology hat because i don't know close to anything about it i know rain gets you wet <laughs> um and if you're wet and it's windy it gets cold but like mm, true 220 mile per hour tornado a mile wide. EF5. I'm assuming it also does a lot of damage. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't, like, that's kind of what they were, like, they were using, just, I got annoyed that they weren't, like, it's blowing 130 miles an hour. Sure. Like, this is bad. And you, and you would think, <laughs> and you would think that uh, there's an outlet for that, especially with, like, having a YouTube channel be there, like, that they may have that opportunity to kind of work that into the script, yeah, and present. It's like, it are in your Twitch way. followers following this, buddy, or your YouTube followers following all this? Or they're just like, yeah, go shoot off the fireworks again. <laughs> do they do the weird thing with it being like a YouTube thing? Do they put it in the like a YouTube yes. website browser on the screen? Oh no, but you they do kind of do. You see it via like the handheld 
iPhone camera and like the drone camera. So gotcha. like there's a quality difference there, gotcha. right? Like this feels like it was shot on an iPhone and it's shaky like it would be mm. which I thought was I thought was an interesting editing choice, but yeah. I, I get it. The the other thing that just kind of annoyed me was um, consistency of car physics. And this, go, this, this goes into, I need a wind, somebody to be like, uh, this tornado is really bad. It's blowing about 140, or it's, maybe it's only 80. I don't know. It's like, it's building. It's only 80 miles per hour over there right now. Oh, it's crazy. Like, oh, but it's, it's getting faster. Yeah. Um, but, and then... Like, there's moments throughout where cars are just flung across the state. Oh, but when our heroes are in it... Oh, and yeah, yeah. It yeah. just topples over. I'm going to chalk that up to just filmmaking. <laughs> filmmaking Movies. does that all the time. <laughs> I was able to forget. I also, again, just watched the original Twisters, where that is very much... Or Twister, where that is very much still the case. Yeah. And it doesn't and, look good. And, like, this one still felt... I thought it felt better. It annoys me in the first one, too. Yeah. Like, okay, when yeah. Carrie Elway's car just gets picked up. Whee! Like, I don't think a car gotten picked up the entire movie. And that one was just like, mm, yeah, we're going. And then it explodes, too. And then they drop, like, three cars in front of their truck as they're... <laughs> There cars were, and just, then a the house blows over, and it's like, I don't know what's going on And anymore. I'm not saying, like, a car's not going to get picked up. Obviously, it's a terrible weather tragedy going on. But, like, sometimes they're just whipping around and getting launched, and then they're like... Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, if they're driving it, then it'll get launched, because there's obviously people in it. But I just... I needed, like... I'm going to give notes. This is what I would have (laughs) done. Obviously, you have your opening tornado. It's horrific. Personally, I thought it was the best tornado in the movie. Also, thank you for the overpass scene. Um, yeah right we were hating on thank that. you it actually was it worked well, incredibly well in don't the, go to the overpass there's nothing worse than that <laughs> immediately goes to the overpass oh my gosh uh they deserved it um <laughs> no like giant tornado for a horrific opening yep and then kind of like build it up they do, i felt like every nice tornado was horrible oh like and this goes in to wind speed. <laughs> like, well, the first one like, after that is is the twins, right? Um, that's the, that's twins. very early on. <laughs> is twins? You get the dual cyclones. Well, there's. I think it's three. the second one. Because they're well, because they're there's the one they, they shoot fireworks they at. Yeah, oh, and then there's yeah. the twins, and they go opposite directions. Yeah, because she's obviously smarter. They gotta prove that. She's like, bro, that cloud is sus. Um, Man, I can't wait to go watch this. Because, like, af- after the movies, I think you have a fun. I, think I like these fun. kind of movies. Oh, it's, it is, I feel like I'm ragging on it. It's a blast. <laughs> it is super fun. I just feel like after the twin tornado, every tornado was the same. Gotcha. I do think they. Just, like, one has fire in it. So. Well, they do. I do think they do a good job of expanding on the destruction after every tornado. But you're right in that it doesn't. N- the tornadoes don't really feel unique in and of themselves. Yeah, it's like here's a big tornado. The city was completely wiped out. Here's another tornado. The city was completely wiped out. Here's our last tornado. Yes, the city was completely wiped out. <laughs> um, I think my only nitpick and this is a again i'll i'll say that this is a kind of a carryover thing and probably a hollywood thing just in terms of how to present this but like when the tornadoes dissipate it just seems like the whole storm dissipates as well and it's like that's not how storms work like it's not all of a sudden gonna be clear skies yeah uh, oh wow minutes, it's sunny t- uh, two minutes after a tornado like it's still raining. It's still like, yeah, but I, from like a, you have to move things along. I guess I can, I can forgive it, um, but that would be a nit, my, yeah. my biggest nitpick. And even is, like, it just kind of felt like the danger was over super suddenly. And even like tornadoes can jump on you really quick. Yeah. And they like, they get that right, but there's still like, presiding signs yeah like we 
you, there's always a tornado watch. The the first. one the one and that, I feel like we never got there's the one scene at the beginning in New York where she's like, no, it's nothing. Yeah, like don't put that into a watch yet. Right. And we never heard those words again. The only one that really bothered me was the rodeo. Yeah, it was just because it was so sudden, and that it's like in the trailer too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And there's there's no wind, and th- this is kind of funny. I actually Google this because I was curious. Um, there's no wind, and then all of a sudden there's wind, and the leaves start coming in. She's like, "What's going on? Oh, there might be a tornado." And there is. Um, I Googled it, and I've, I'm not gonna say this is pure fact because it's just like the front of Google. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like most of the time there'll be a dead spot of wind. Like the wind will just stop before oh, yeah. the tornado actually yeah, yeah. starts. I mean, we talk about I had how always heard about that. We, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty like this. You get things to look for: sky getting green, mm-hmm. and no wind is actually like that's when you should be worried. Yeah. At least that's what I grew up. No, I that could be yeah. completely inaccurate. But <laughs> yeah. which is a shame when it's a uh, nighttime. <laughs> Right. And that's honestly is my favorite scene in the original mm-hmm. is when they're all at the movie theater mm-hmm. and they're just kind of like, <laughs> it's too quiet. Um, and yeah, that was, that was, that was a great scene. It was a good f- scene. Just fighting for their life when Absolutely. the tornado actually hits. It, also, you know, that lady nice. in the, the hotel is totally me. Like almost, she's like nine out of ten times. It's it's nothing. It's nothing. Like I'm not saying that when the sirens and right. warnings are going. You're off. not I'm getting like, in your car. I just don't think I'm gonna get hit. Right. Because <laughs> it's gonna go away. You have plot armor. I'm not saying it's not a dangerous. Si- yeah, I have plot armor. No. <laughs> it's because I'm the comic relief. Yeah. Oh, you yes. know, look, no. I think why both of us. I mean, maybe I shouldn't speak for you. I why I think I like you that scene so me. much is because it's not a chase scene. They're yeah. not chasing the tornado. They are just in the path, and they're, and they're not scared. in their vehicles. And there's like there's nothing they can do. It's it's caught them, and they're presented in a in a way in which they haven't been yet because they've always been so confident out amongst the tornadoes driving. Now it's like, oh crap, what do we do? Now we're dodging the flying cars, yeah. and we're trying Unironic- to convince people to just listen to or us. Maybe ironically, I don't know. His vehicle may have been the safest one there if they could have gotten those jacks down. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Clearly, because, well, reasons. Right, uh, reasons. Yeah, I liked it when the dude just became a little parachute, flew off. It's like, <laughs> b- brother, just lay, da- just lay down. Just, just lay down. Fun. That's just all you had to do. Glenn Powell was right there. <laughs> he was saying, hey, brother, lay down. I was like, no, I'm going to stand up and go like this. I'm going to be a big old parachute. If there's anything from Twisters that I've learned, it's if there's a natural Don't disaster around you, oh. listen to the most attractive people. Yes. They're cuz they're the main characters and they, they know what they're though. talking about. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to be listening to the most attractive person as well. <laughs> so, um I'm I'm waiting for uh, Twisters 3. Um I'd like to go to another state. Mm. Kansas has to get film incentives first. I don't. I don't need Kansas. I. J- I don't. I would even wouldn't even mind if it's like a state where it's maybe the tornadoes aren't as common, but we're seeing tornadoes. Georgia. Mm. Georgia sure. got leveled yeah. recently. Yeah. And they're not used to tornadoes. I feel like because even in the I movie like they're like, "There's a crazy tornado in outbreak the, in the south southeast." That would be really like yeah. fun and interesting. They have a very different top. You just see an alligator and... flying across the screen, You're like hey. <laughs> yeah, they have different Florida man news home lot, situations. Like, yeah, exactly. I think that could be really interesting. I did thought it was interesting though. They're like, every time they try and find a basement, there never is one. It's like, <laughs> brothers, we're in Oklahoma. Come on, Oklahoma, do better. Oh. They can't do basements because of the red clay or whatever. That red dirt. Yeah. I mean, my grandparents had a basement, so it's possible. Yeah. Which is um, bad for your foundation, I suppose. Because Dana had to explain this to me like I was five. Because we were driving around there when we went and did the more oh, disaster relief mm-hmm. thing. And I was like, why don't these people have basements? Like, I feel bad that their houses are destroyed, but why did none of them have basements? She's like, because they can't. Like, what are you talking about? 
She was like, a lot of companies won't clear them because of the, the dirt. Because of just the, yeah, the composition the of clay the, or whatever. It composition just doesn't, of the clay. It just squeezes Well, David Corn's wet's pop definitely ain't clearing a basement. <laughs> so, I guess that's accurate, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Oklahoma. I, I Dig will, a hole. For Twisters 3, I saw a tweet. I have Until to. they big, build a bigger tornado. Or no, they've got to get a tornado... <laughs> To be on their team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they've if they've if they're working on taming tornadoes in this one, we've got to figure out how to get one on our side. <laughs> you got to spin it the other you way. You got to you got to have a tornado <laughs> fight another tornado. Control the cloud movements. Instead of erasing tornadoes, we're going to figure out how to make it spin the other way and fight for truth, justice, <laughs> the American way. <laughs> just have it be a mix. And they're going to team up with tornado. Godzilla and King Kong. Yeah, yeah. Just red tornado. Oh, well, okay. It's it's very fun. I liked it a lot. I had a blast. Don't listen to just my nitpicks. I can't, oh complaints. yeah, I can't wait to watch it. Um, there you watch like the tornado attacks, and you're just like, this is super awesome, and lots of people die in the movie, and it's pretty intense. Very intense, indeed. Indeed. Looking forward to it. Like 500% more people die in this one than the first one. Uh, so many. <laughs> so many more. So many more. Oh, and uh, spoilers. Can I spoil something that ultimately doesn't really matter? Sure. Helen Hunt wasn't in the movie. Mm, yeah. Dumpster fire. No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Helen Hunt was definitely supposed to be the mom. Mom. And Helen Hunt was not paid. So she said no. <laughs> <laughs> They could not write the check that big. Come on. You should have done it. Did you see she was in the news this week saying that she was trying to get a sequel made back in like 2021 or something and they wouldn't give her a meeting? No, but that doesn't surprise me. She was me. like, I was going to write it and all this stuff. And it's like, why are you saying that now, man? <laughs> like, Because it's mi- being successful. It's so dumb. Get her in the third one. So Luke gives it a dumpster fire. Yeah. Just no. kidding. What do you really give it? A fanboy worthy. Okay, yeah. yeah. I give it a fanboy worthy too. I think it's a lot of fun and um, maybe not for all ages, but, you know, it is pretty intense. I wouldn't take your littles to this, but. Or if you if they're, like, not serious about tornadoes, take them to them and be like, this is going to be you if you don't listen. This is going to be, yeah, yeah. When I say go to the basement, you go to the basement. Go to the basement immediately. But In Google. my letterbox, I did have to... Uh, complain that nobody has yet said the word tornado tornado in any of these movies Mm. Mm. which i'm not a fan of because i feel like i say it all the time (laughs) and i hear it all the time (laughs) and it does not feel genuine that nobody's saying we're gonna go wrangle a tornado (laughs) there's been zero paul bunyan references like come on baroque has a few things in the chat one one says uh there's a theory among NASCAR fans about the cars driving in and out creates a vortex that keeps storms away and evaporates the rain droplets before they hit the ground. Sounds like it could be made to work for Twisters 3. <laughs> <laughs> Twist 3 Gotta Twister. replace the E with the with 3. The e, yeah, yeah. And then he also asks, so how is college football treating you, Tyler? I'll talk about that later. But you've... What are, how many hours are you into that now? hundred? Too many. Not a hundred. I was out of town all weekend. I would have said 200 if I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. It's out of town all weekend. I played last night. I got home. I got on about 9. I played to like one thirty, And then I was nice. off today. So I played literally all day. I had to like take a break at 1 to eat lunch and shower because I just could not <laughs> stop playing. Oh my gosh. Tyler. And then I got right back on and played till like 5. What team 15. did you pick? Well, or where, where did you get recruited? Recruited? So I'm doing dynasty mode. So I started as an offensive coordinator, and I went to North Texas. Had a rough first year, I think, but we had a winning record. Second year, I won offensive coordinator of the year. Let's go, baby. We made it to the college football playoff. We were undefeated to that point and got absolutely mollywopped because we're North Texas and Miami, and all those schools are way better than us. So then, and I was playing on the hardest difficulty, which everybody says is impossible, which I highly disagree. Heisman? Yeah. So then I took a head coaching job at K-State. Um, I know that school. And I dropped it down to All-American because I had never played defense. And now I think I need to put it back on Heisman because I think it's a little too easy. <laughs> but I've heard defense is the the problem on Heisman. Because, like, offensively I can score, like, 70 points a game, but, like, stopping people is going to be the problem. Um, 
And apparently on Heisman, defense is borderline impossible. So they need to set it to where you could set offensive difficulty, defensive difficulty. Mm. Defense wins championships. It does. And right now I'm 5-0 and with K-State. <laughs> um, ranked second in the country. So it's going well. I'm having a blast. It's not perfect, but it's uh, it's doing what I need it to. You should recreate the Wichita State Shockers. Too many people have already done it. Oh. Boo. Or yay, I don't know. I mean, I don't need to do it because I can just download the file. You can, are they making Ted Lasso their coach? Uh, some people. <laughs> I mean, you can create Ted. Where is this? Oh, That's I have a funny. Picture of one. Well, cool. Thank you for that little update on college football, Tyler. College football twenty five, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's one. Um, the yes. other thing that. <laughs> Luke and I did this last week was finish the Acolyte. Oh boy, season one. I like that one more. Um, the internet has I like been a buzz with opinions, uh, and they're all wrong. The they're all wrong. <laughs> the positive ones, the negative ones, they're just all wrong. I Nobody's think right anymore. This is just where we're at with <laughs> Star Wars: is that it's either the best or the worst, and. I, just I think, think Luke and I will both find it to be somewhere in the middle, although I don't. It's pretty. It's pretty low for Luke. Pretty low for me. Um, I was pretty happy with where it ended up. I don't think that it had the smoothest of sailings getting there. Um, for an eight episode show, I think it really feels like it could have been five um and told a more linear and interesting story um but i do like a lot of the ideas that they're playing with and talking about um it just seems that it was i think it was maybe a little too interested in having it feel like this grand mystery like we always got to be the mystery feeling a little a little one new, of the worst new parts, thing i think here and there you know there's it seems like every other episode there's a little new revelation that is meant to be bigger than it needs to be and it's more like oh, it's like oh okay oh, okay um and okay. so the format of the show i think is is based around those kind of reveals and i think it hurts the 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 pacing specifically but it but i think it leads to some uninteresting episodes as well yeah so and i think it also hurts it that one of its more interesting episodes which is a flashback you watch that episode again from a different perspective and it kind of just ruins the first one i still think it doesn't i think it doesn't add anything it just it made the interesting parts less interesting stupid (laughs) <laughs> like and here's here's this is probably the only and i won't even consider this lore as far as star wars lore goes i don't really care what you do mm-hmm. just do something cool and if that ends up like changing something that we thought was different cool yeah i don't care i don't sure. i don't care that the four switches is that what we call it? I guess. The, yeah, Force Witches. The Witches. <laughs> I don't care that they made a Force baby. I don't care. I think it's cool. I don't think Plagueis needs to discover everything on his own. Right. I think it's kind of sithy that he would um, steal it from somebody else, in fact. Yeah. Um, the only lore thing I think I'll really complain about, because it's no different in my opinion, to anything we've gotten, is that the Jedi are just so dumb. (laughs) And it's not in an interesting way. Like, it felt like in the prequels, they are like, oh, we're just arrogant and blind. And it's like, well, I guess. Or is it just bad writing? Right, sure. And it felt the exact same in this one, where it's just like, they're just... It's not compellingly puzzled together. Mm -hmm. They're just 
the Jedi are always stupid. <laughs> and when every single Jedi at this point now it feels like is a rebellious type how Anakin was, I feel like no Jedi anymore is just like, you know, I'm a Jedi, I'm the good cop. Mm. Everyone has got this gray area and I got to lie to protect my Jedi family. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of tired of it. I think there's, <laughs> and, you know, Baroque in the chat mentions Jedi are so dumb. I feel the same way watching the Clone Wars. Um, I, I do think that's a trope that even makes its way into the Clone Wars. But you have so much more time to live with that. Eight, and and se- it's in the seasons, context of a war, seasons. right? Like, so I, yeah. I think that there is stuff. But to your point, I look at a character like Obi-Wan Kenobi, and it, he feels like a Jedi who is trying to do the best thing he can, is not dumb, maybe doesn't have all the answers. Like, he... We, we learn in, in Clone Wars he's maybe a little morally gray, but he never feels like he's doing a thing for the wrong reason. Yeah. Um, One of the best arcs, by the way. In that <laughs> and I think what's what could have been really compelling in this first season of this show, if it ever gets a second, we don't know, but would to have had the twins... Twins! Look, we got twins! You know, both be... They're, they're both presented with the light side and, and the light side of the forest and the dark side of the forest, right? They, they both get to interact with Jedi and, and Sith. And I wish I could have seen um, especially the Jedi actually be appealing in a way that the, the Sith were um, to make those choices that they make more meaningful. I just never felt like there's any reason for them yeah. to even it even as children to to want to join the Jedi. Yeah. Other than I'm scared of what the ceremony is, I think I'd rather go with these people. Like that's a legitimate fear as a child. You know what? That but you could expound on that. That should have been a red flag to the Jedi. It's like this kid is super <laughs> afraid. <laughs> like oh. So, but uh, like I'm I said, all knowing another thing I'm really tired of. They're too old. They're too old. They're too old to be a Jedi. How many times is the kid going to be too old? <laughs> Luke was 20? Isn't he like 20 in the original Star Wars? Yeah, like 18 or something. They've consistently yeah. gotten younger and they're always too old. Can yeah. we just like find a kid and be like, want to be a Jedi? <laughs> sure. Let's go, buddy. That'll be Ray's new movie. Whatever that is. Good. <laughs> Good. Finally, they'll do something different. But um, another thing about the twins that I... Listen... Twins are terrible, but um, I they just flip flopped their decisions every episode. Yeah, and it like by the time we got to episode seven, it was so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is it? Episode five, the big battle. Yeah, night. Um, right before that, the. So put the the bad twin is like I'm gonna turn myself into Jedi because my sister's still alive. Immediately tries to kill the Jedi when they're going to arrest her, even though she's gonna turn herself in. Then she immediately tries to kill her sister. It's like in the span of 15 minutes, <laughs> people make decisions in the. Sh- this is I think another terrible thing about the show as far as. Filmmaking, the pacing mm-hmm. is so fast. People make decisions so fast. Like with um, OSHA. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're making some pretty rash decisions pretty quickly at the end here. Absolutely. And I get it. Emotion is not good in Jedi. So they keep telling me. Um, but, yeah. I As far as the last episode goes... I thought it was just another bad episode. Um, I think there was only one good action sequence in the entire show, which was the... Big fight in the, five. Yeah, the big murder scene. <laughs> the, uh, the, the main Sith fight. Yeah. 
I think they they did so many just goofy action stuff. Like when stuff when like Soul is like floating around and I don't know, it just it looked bad to me. It looked like wire work with maybe actors who weren't as trained in <laughs> wire work combat, right? Like I don't know. I don't I don't I think there's an opportunity to talk about you using the force in unique ways in battle that can explain it, but I do think you know, it it came off more as maybe inexperience on wires than yeah. than like a hey, we're going to use the force in cool new ways to move around and navigate. Um, I didn't have as much of a problem with the final episode action pieces. Um, and again, I think where they end up is interesting. I just What did you think took... about the killing a Jedi with no hands stuff? I, I mean, I don't know. I, I thought it was so cheesy. With no weapons, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With no, no weapons. weapons. Was that supposed to be like the like the first time that's happened? Is that, that's what it feels like. That's kind of with the vibe that I got, and I I I laughed. <laughs> I laughed. I, I laughed I a lot. During I this didn't episode. laugh, but I got I a lot bigger laugh it, at the very end. I'll tell you. <laughs> I wouldn't say that it was. Um, yeah. Oh, the very end. Was, the very end where they do an Avengers tease. Yeah. Was comical beyond belief. Like. And I should have just seen it coming. Might have even predicted it before the show started. Oh. I think... I'm, I'm so tired of seeing prequel characters that aren't... This one. <laughs> it's the only one I care about now. She's not even alive, bro. Her story is done in the prequels, though. <laughs> That's true. Um, I think, like, at the end of the day... I am always going to support Star Wars taking chances, which is why I'm glad that this exists. And I'll even go so far as to say, I hope that there's a season two, because I think a season one is going to help them get their sea legs. That's like a creative team. And I think that there's a much more interesting linear story that they can tell in in season two. Um, that's not kind of bagged down by the Jedi, the weight of <laughs> the whole, I don't know, again, the mystery and the twists that go into season one. Like, I feel like now the lines are pretty clearly drawn on where everyone's at. Um, and they could tell a really interesting more. I mean, I, it will probably feel more traditional. It doesn't have to be more traditional, but I think it'll yep. feel like a more traditional star Wars story and have some really interesting things with characters who um, we've heard about kind of in legend and we know exist but haven't gotten to see yet. Um, and there will, of course, be the, you know, prequel, the, the Yodas of the world, right, who just end up there because we have to tie things together. So, Do we have to, though? corporations and executives think Ah, we have to tie things together (laughs) gotcha so um for me this was a straight to streaming i think it's right where it deserves to be in (laughs) you know in terms of like this is put out on disney plus and it's you know i don't think it's a cost extra i don't think it's a premium tv show by any stretch of the imagination right like it's not a star wars show uh for example and or is a Star Wars show that I'm like, that could be on HBO. Not everyone agrees with me on that. But I think the quality of that <laughs> show is, like, up there. And this one just does not have that. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I think it's it could be enjoyable. Um, half of people who are Star Wars fans will enjoy it. Half of people who are Star Wars fans will hate it. Um my guess is if that you're a really casual Star Wars fan, you probably won't care about it. Yeah. Because it, it does do some, like, deep cuts, and I don't know. It doesn't have those characters you know. But there could be some casual fans out there who are just like, oh, I'm kind of glad this doesn't really tie into anything else. I have to I don't have to follow 
Until it does. Until it does, but for now it doesn't, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, where do you put it? As far as this, like a second season goes, if if they give this a second season, I think they need a new team. Okay, and that's. I think they need a new writing team. Kind of just works. I think they need a new cinematographer. They need a new stunt coordinator. Mm-hmm. They they need to start over. Obviously, the actors are cast. Right. So you need a new acting coach. <laughs> um. Because I think the biggest weaknesses of the show are all behind the camera based for mm. the most part, excluding acting, <laughs> which is obviously in camera. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's just it was such a mess. Um, I'm I'm just waiting for them to do Revan's storyline. From Knights of the Old Republic. And the Star Wars community, which doesn't like anything anymore, will not like that. <laughs> and you know what? I probably won't like it either. Because Revan is pretty iconic. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you do it with Osha's character, you can't really do it with Revan. And people have wa- wanted Revan to actually be brought into the main yeah. storyline. And I feel like if you do it now, and then you do it later, it's like, oh, we've done this already. Yeah. So, oh. but they're, uh, even like the stranger's mask. Mm-hmm. And I've thought of this during the finale. It's, it's like, he sounds like Malik from the game. He's got the jaw on yeah. his mask. It just, Malik was missing his jaw. Mm. So I'm like expecting him to get his jaw caught off if they do a season two. Yeah. It's like, yeah. If they do that. It's like, Oh no, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll amend my straight to streaming okay. to a find the super good fight scene on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you don't have Disney Plus, don't buy Disney Plus. Sure. To watch this, just watch what you can on YouTube. Get the highlights. Somebody's probably put it on TikTok. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, probably. <laughs> Probably um, would be a subpar version, though. I was talking to somebody, and they were like, I watched, a whole, I watched a whole show on TikTok. And I was like, bro, what? Why? Why? He's like, this dude was just posting it in snippets. And I was like, <laughs> just, just go watch the show. That is so dumb. <laughs> oh, oh. How is that oh. not pirating? Oh, bro. I'm sure, it probably technically is. But, but yeah, Acolyte, not good. There's my review. Short and sweet. TLDR, not good. Cool, cool. All right. Um, real quick, any news happening? We talked about Twisters. It had a really good weekend at the box office. 80 million plus. Man, they were posting that at like Sunday morning. Do they have? I hadn't even bought my ticket yet. More final <laughs> numbers. Your numbers don't count for this. Like, weekend. I don't understand box office. Is that like Thursday, Friday, Saturday is what we're doing? Well, Thursday's previews. Open, opening weekend is, right. Like, so Friday, they, Saturday. Really Friday, is. Saturday. Are they psychic? How are they getting those numbers? How do they know I'm going to buy a ticket? I bought my ticket at 10, 10. Well, that's why they're I, saying. I bought it in the parking lot. That's why they say that it's, it's predict, like, it's anticipated or predicted numbers. Um, 81 Thursday through Sunday. Oh, that $1. Or that $1 million. 81 I million. I that. Uh, domestic, internet, like worldwide, it's one twenty four. I'll tell you what, though, the reason I saw it at ten fifteen was because the theaters were pretty much sold out in the afternoon and the evening. So I just went to the latest showing. <laughs> you know, Kansas and Oklahoma is going to show out for Twisters. They're going to yeah. represent for sure. Well, speaking of Twisters, Glenn Powell confirmed on the press junket that they have a production date for the sequel to Top Gun Maverick. Okay. So that's that gets an update that's randomly. News. Since Tom Cruise's boy said that. Mm-hmm. Which that's a weird thing to be watching happen in real time. I don't know if I should be excited for that. <laughs> um, Halo got canceled. What else can you do? Oh, yeah. Paramount's cleaning closet since they're Dude, trying to sell the, get sold. Nobody get was sad. 
Oh, dude, poor people. Everybody Paramount. took a victory lap and they canceled it. They were like, that's what you get for not trusting the people who play the games. And I was like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. And then, what's it, like, 10 hours later, Prime Video or Amazon was like, we're way ahead of schedule on season two, yeah. and we got nominated for, like, 15 Emmys. <laughs> yep. It's kind of hilarious. Oh, that was a news story, too. Emmy nominations came out. Oh, yeah? Congratulations to the Baron Shogun. Because you're going to win every single one. True. <laughs> That's just what I, it's how it is, folks. And they both deserve it. The, uh... In, over in superhero news, the, uh... Big rumor, not, not confirmed yet, big rumor is that the Russo Bros will be back to direct the next two <laughs> Avengers movies... Um, Where did that bring you? <laughs> Back to me. I don't know. They're if, inevitable. If this is, is this worse for Marvel or worse for the Russo brothers? Because what this, what this reads to me is that neither of them could actually do good without, good each, without other. each other or yeah. something. You know, there's like, if the Russos were doing well enough that they wouldn't come back to do Avengers. If Marvel could actually get it shit together, they wouldn't have felt like they needed to the, bring the Russos back. I'm going to say it's worse for Marvel because they're probably pay- paying them buku money to get them to come back. That's probably true. It's probably $50 million of the budget. 25 I, each? I don't know. I guess I'll use this moment to say that this does not really excite me. Um I feel like this is just them saying, yep, yeah, we're going to bring them back because we know that the legacy actors will want to act with them again or work mm. with them again. And so we'll get Chris Evans back. We'll get Downey Jr. back. We'll get ScarJo back. We'll get all the original, you know, get the band back together. And I just... Marvel just refuses to move forward. Like everything... They, they just keep trying to capture the same lightning in the same bottle again. Yeah. And it's like, no, you need to go find new lightning. Like, you, you got to go find a new thing. Like, I, I don't know. Got to ride the lightning. And I think what's upsetting for me is, like, I loved Shang-Chi. I, th- I think that movie mm-hmm. was awesome. And that director was going to do the Avengers movies. And then now he's not. And then right. they're bringing the Russos back. And it's like, okay. And, like, I know legacy characters will be a big part of Secret Wars and all that stuff. And that's fine. But if they're going to do both of, both Avengers movies prior to Secret Wars it's just going to be the same stuff we've already seen. Yeah. And then, you know, on the heels of that, I guess they found a replacement for Kang and they're announcing it next weekend. Apparently that's the rumor. Cause SDCC is this weekend. I, think. Uh, um, I don't care about the Russo's coming back because the writer is who I'm worried about. <laughs> Who's the writer? He did a uh, doctor strange too. Oh, I think, oh. Right. I think there's also rumors that he may be out of writing Avengers 5. He was doing Avengers 6. Wasn't it the guy who did Avengers 6? What was it called? Secret Wars. Starting Anthony Mackie, Benedict Wong. I think at this point it may be like a completely new team. But the Russos come on. Oh, board. that's also Mike Waldron. Okay. If yeah. the Russos come on board, they're going to clean all that out and get new people. It'll be like loosely probably structured on whatever has been written before, but they'll they'll bring in... They'll rework the their, whole thing. Their Captain America Avengers writers to do... Marcus and McFeely to probably touch it up. and If they can, I mean... I, mean, I wouldn't hate that. I'm... <laughs> no, I mean, I'd be on board. I like them. <laughs> I'd be on board for it. I just... I don't know. They need to swing... They need to take a swing. They do. They do. It's, it's weird because I do feel like Phase 4 is what we were in, right? Like, Phase 4 had weird little swings. Yeah. Like, they they had some swings that just not, none of them really hit. Or they were all foul balls or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you can't have that many misses without the parent company going okay but let then let's go back to what was working before yep so. let's go back well, to jj abrams <laughs> with bob with bob Iger back to yeah calling the shots officially again he's yeah. gonna be like go pay the russos 
a billion dollars. We gotta we gotta get the gang back together. Well, speaking of places that are trying to not spend billions of dollars, Apple has been uh, reportedly cutting back on its TV productions, um, or they're looking to. Who? The uh, well, Tyler. You know how much they spent reportedly on Severance on each episode of Severance season two. How much? Twenty million dollars. Why? Good question. <laughs> I would be wanting to cut back on that too. You don't need that much money. To you make don't that need show. that much money. <laughs> They've spent twenty billion in total, I guess, for their shows. That is so much money. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. And in, in uh, well, that streamer was as fun it has, while it as lasted. a comparison, Foundation reportedly. Uh, was costing Apple five million per episode. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> so I don't know how Severance is that. John Turturro does not cost that much. <laughs> so unless maybe Severance season two becomes the most insane thing we've ever. I was going to say we maybe it gets like real, of. real left fieldish. It just gets real crazy, but yeah. Maybe they should start releasing physical media. Ooh. Does Apple not? No. 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 They did. I thought it was just Netflix that didn't. Some of their sh- some of their movies may have been released physically. Yeah. But not I mean none of their shows have been, I don't think. But anyways. Any other news stories? Uh Bethesda's unionizing. Yep. Oh yeah. It's officially been recognized by yeah. Microsoft. Way to go, cool. Bethesda. Let's go. They were like, we seen what Microsoft was doing. <laughs> and we ain't letting it happen to us. Oh, Microsoft. <laughs> they had a rough week. They did. <laughs> oh, yeah. They uh, revealed their new Game Pass tiers. Um, got Ranging slapped, between 5 and $30 or something. Got slapped uh, <laughs> with a, like a fine from... FTC, FTC, he was like taking them to court because game they're degrading they're their degrade, product. Yeah, which I dad honestly looks like a legitimate. Yeah, well, and like apparently too, that's why they didn't want them to buy Activision Blizzard, right? Because they wanted to avoid that. And then when they did it, they were like, "This is exactly what we were trying to prevent." Dude, what if they make them sell Activision Blizzard? That would be hilarious. Oh my that gosh. would be so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Um, and then uh, some somebody sent out the wrong update for, for their security yeah. or whatever for CrowdStrike. Crowd strike. Oh yeah, CrowdStrike. <laughs> so down, like, all the, the planes world. were grounded. <laughs> Just bricked Microsoft stuff for three oh, days. Dude. I saw a bricked some MRI intern. machine. And I was like, Ooh. some intern at Microsoft is having the worst week. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I can't do it. To be right. clear, c- CrowdStrike is not CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is not. Like, a part of Microsoft, right? I think it is. I don't think, like, it's Microsoft. It's, did like, you their see... security, isn't it? Yeah, it's part of their cybersecurity package. But did you see, like, the Southwest thing? So Southwest flights didn't have any impact because they were running on such an old yeah. system. They were running on, like, 3.1. So, like, they they, they hadn't updated. So the yeah, flights were, so they were... Or they weren't impacted. They're... they're crown, crowd. crowd Strike is their own company. Yeah, like they're not. Yeah. I just want to be sure, be clear here. Like it was not a Microsoft problem. It, it was a it was a problem oh, with Microsoft what? machines, <laughs> but Microsoft didn't push out an update right. that bricked everyone. Crowd, clap, gosh, dang it's it! CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike sent out. An you update. have to boot up Destiny and shoot that sniper a couple times. <laughs> I know. No, it's, it's like getting a song out of your head. You yeah. gotta listen. To can't, it. can't. Get that lightning strike. Do, 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 do. It's all right, I'm good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Let's go shoot one drag. Baroque says, I got a day off of work because of the crowd strike. Deal. Dude, I didn't. I was kind of <laughs> mad. Actually, Ooh, nice. I do I do have a, an update for my work computer. It's like, mm, I know, should I Maybe do don't this? do it. Should I do <laughs> this? I haven't because like, I don't know if I should do this. Maybe I'll email IT tomorrow and be like, I have an update. Well, my thing. Is it going to blow my explode? computer up? <laughs> so... All right, cool. Uh, any other new stories? No, I don't have any. There's All probably right. more, uh, Warner Brothers Games acquires Player First Games. 
officially. That was the, the Multiverses de- yeah, developer. The studio? Yep. They've officially acquired them. Is the game right. still going? Apparently. I don't know. I played it after they like released it for a match, and I was like, What yeah. has more players, Multiverses or Suicide Squad? Kill it, just I now. actually think Multiverses does. <laughs> What has more players? Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, Multiverses, or Batman, Arkham Asylum? And then, <laughs> or here's the, the re- first one on original <laughs> Xbox. Here's the real three-headed monster. It's um, Multiverses, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, or Concord. Oh yeah, Ooh, Sony's Concord, the Concord is beta. bad. bad Did not have like a thousand stuff. concurrent players? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like two two thousand. Its peak on... was two thousand. It was an open beta. Yeah, dude, they need to delay that. They need to just and turn not... it into free to play or make it go. I've out heard with like a I've heard release. good things about people who have played it from people who have played it. Yeah, that like it plays well, but I think you're right. I don't think it's going to be a Hell Divers even at forty dollars. This is gonna strike gold for PlayStation. Yeah. I watched as soon as they revealed it was a hero shooter, I was like, this thing is doomed. Yeah. yeah. There's no I, hope for it. I watched Skill Up talk about his beta experience, and he's like, yeah, this game is fun. But they need to de- delay it because there are some major flaws in some of the like building blocks in mm. When's it set game. to launch? Uh, September? August? September. August? Somewhere okay. in there. A couple months. Pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah it's pretty yeah. coming up here pretty quick. Dang, dang. Man, I bet Tyler would have played that if uh, EA Football 26 August 23rd. wasn't out. August 23rd. I probably Ooh, wouldn't August. have played it unless it was free. It was an open beta. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have played that. <laughs> I don't like playing shooters on my PlayStation. Like, first person. I think it feels fun. I feel like you're most likely to actually try something, though. That's probably true. I don't know. I probably wouldn't have tried it. Some random shooter. <laughs> as soon as they were like, I enjoyed shooter, Overwatch for like three months. I played Overwatch for a while. I played Overwatch revealed... for five minutes and I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> Once it was revealed to be a hero shooter, I was like, yeah, man, I'm not, I'm not into that. I'll try I just Marvel feel like Rivals. those, those kind of games, I have to have people like friends to play with. Yeah. And as I've gotten older, I have less friends. That's how I feel about Valorant too. Like Valorant is yeah. really fun, but playing with random sucks because they're also toxic uh people on the internet being toxic who would have thought you know how to uh stop people being toxic mute them be more toxic be- <laughs> oh no i usually just mute them that does feel like like luke's philosophy <laughs> i love it yeah i just mute them <laughs> i mean it's what i see on the internet all the time i see one person call somebody a name and i see somebody else call someone a worse name and i'm like oh that's what you're supposed to do am i learning the right lesson no no <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, real quick do a little fan box kind of thing. This is from me, I guess, today, not from a, a listener. But I want to know, we're halfway, over halfway through the year. What are your favorite movies that have come out? What are maybe, you know, things that someone hasn't seen yet? Um, but before, you know, school gets back in session, they should make sure to go rent or find online. Oh, I'm furious <laughs> So I have two, uh, I'll, I'll tear my answer. The one that everybody's seen is Dune. Sure. Um, that's Dune. Far and away, Dune. I think Dune favorite, part two. My favorite movie so far this year. Um, but one that's like less popular. <laughs> Very, what? Just thought of the best spinoff for Dune ever. Dune part two. The musical. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Make it happen, Luke. Make it happen. Well, speaking of musicals, the the movie I was going to say that I really enjoyed this year, um, and I think more people should watch, is The Color Purple. Oh. It came out last year, but I watched it this this spring before you the, watched Oscars. It before the Oscars. Yeah. And um, if you haven't seen it, I think you should give it a shot. It's a good one. Nice. Also, Maxine. Mm, yeah. Yep, Maxine's good. Um, The one, Dune Part 2 is at the top of my list yeah. as well. But I think sitting at number three, one that I think more people should check out is Lisa Frankenstein. Hmm. That is a just a grand old fun little movie. Had a, a I'll take your word it. for it. I know. That one's just not something, unless Dana wanted to watch it, I would never watch that. But maybe she'll want to watch it sometime. It's a good time. Yeah. It might be a great one to throw on around Halloween. Yeah. 
It's coming up. It's got to unseat it Hubie is. Halloween, which is pretty hard to do. It does not have to unseat it. You can watch more than one movie per nope. holiday. Nope. Season of the Witch. Season of the Witch, Hubie <laughs> Halloween. Those are the two. And now you can add a third. Long legs. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Luke, what about you? Dune. <laughs> We're doing this. Um, I'm actually waiting for Furiosa to come out, though, so I can just watch them both again. Because mm. I'm a little conflicted inside. Because I really loved that, too. Um, but I haven't got a chance to watch it again yet. Um, but that is also my pick for You Need to Go Watch It, because it made no money in the theaters. And so I think it's available to rent online now. I think so. Furiosa is awesome. Incredible it is a great movie. movie. Great yeah. movie. Um, Fall Guy. Yeah amazing i'm not sure where its box office ended up at um ministry of ungentlemanly warfare Mm -hmm. that's out on blu-ray now fantastic movie um a lot of fun yeah if you want to watch a really fun corny as heck movie the beekeeper man that was so hilarious yes i still gotta watch that i'm telling you you don't know where that movie ends (laughs) (laughs) oh Oh, oh my gosh so yeah, there's some of our end with favorites. Him turning into a B. What about shows? What's your favorite show? True Detective. Yeah, so far. Mine is Fallout. I haven't finished. Fallout. Fallout's in number two for me, Luke. So it's still up there. Over in the chat, Baroque says the Abigail Erasure is upsetting. What does that mean? Abigail, Baroque. the vampire movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, the one like with the just, little girl. Like yeah. the one, like we're like we need to see it. Is what I'm hearing. He's like saying you it's and, up, he said it's upsetting. I know the era- er- erasure. It means we're not talking about. It. Yeah, okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I do want to see it. I think it's out now. I I see ads for it all the time actually. So I think it's. I need to. I need to check it out. It is one that I'm. Would probably out of the three of us, I'm the only one who'd probably check that out. I think vampires are dumb. No. I'd watch it. I just don't. The only vampire movie I'm not gonna go see it in the theaters. I'm sure. gonna see is Nosferatu <laughs> <laughs> on Christmas Day. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? I'm feeling the holly jolly Christmas. What movie. an <laughs> awesome time to release a <laughs> vampire movie. Counter programming, man. Absolutely. The chosen Christmas special Nosferatu. <laughs> <laughs> what a double feature. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Uh, real quick. What's your favorite game of the year, Tyler? No, Everybody like knows what that is. Favorite game of the year? What's your favorite game of the century? I could probably answer the same game. Of the century? Yeah. Obviously, it's EA College Football 20... No, of the century, it'd be Red Dead 2. It's a new century, buddy. Oh, uh, I guess... Okay. Starting yeah, twi- yeah. Started 2020, we're ending on 2120. I'm changing the rules. <laughs> when did Red Dead 2 come out? <laughs> uh, 16, 17? We're starting on 2020. This is a different century. I had to change the rules because I forgot about that game. Okay, it was a decade. <laughs> Good lord. Um, I'm just, I just assumed it was going to be college football. What number is it? 25. 25. I was trying to not answer with that one. No, dude, follow your heart. I'll go with that then. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Have you played any games this year? I guess Destiny 2. <laughs> Helldivers. Oh, I'll, I'll say Alan Wake 2 since I, I don't, oh, yeah. saying I can't say Close college football. <laughs> yeah. And unclose. I've played like three <laughs> new games this year. What'd you Helldivers, play? Helldivers, Alan Wake 2. Helldivers is great. And you didn't beat Alan I Wake. Did have be- I have played it. That doesn't, how much have you played it? I'm, you can beat Helldivers? No. no, no, no. I'm talking about Alan Wake. He hasn't beat Alan. Oh, Wake. I was thinking Hell Divers. Just because I haven't beat it doesn't mean it can't be my favorite. No, that's true. But how much of it have you actually played? I don't. I don't know. Six hours, maybe. Oh yeah, you got a long way to go. No, you know I what? know I'm not that far into it. I am aware of that. I'm just stating new games that I have played this year. It's a great one. I feel like I'm being attacked for no legitimate reason. Just wait till we beat you up in your driveway later. <laughs> <laughs> and then force you. You haven't beat all the way too. <laughs> and then force Son you to bitch. play it. <laughs> Where's my money, Brett? <laughs> 
You gotta you gotta play control next. Oh uh, yeah. He's never playing that game. <laughs> Even though we made him because Or we Ghost of Tsushima. Well I'm you playing should, that. You should play that one too. I took that back because he wasn't that. playing it. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like 20 hours deep in a new game plus. I have right played now. all of these games. I have not beat any of these games. I want to know, here's a question. Name name some games that you've played but haven't beaten. A lot of them. How dare you? <laughs> you mean you don't beat every game you play? What I, is the last single player game you beat? Starfield? Starfield, probably. I, does Destiny, the final shape count? You beat that? I know, that's what I'm saying. I beat it. That's not single player though. Yeah, it has a campaign. But you I play it with people. Excuse me. I played that single I played <laughs> okay. that I played that okay. game single player you for like did. a year and a half. <laughs> it's definitely single player. I'm with Brett on this one. <laughs> no, I was just trying to Knives think like, are out tonight. What single player games have I beat recently? Where's my video game rankings? Claire has almost beat Ori in the Blind Forest. Oh wow. Those games are hard, too. Yeah. <laughs> Sign her up for Hollow Knight. She She's played, ready. <laughs> she So she played through it once with, like, Stephanie and I helping her in mm-hmm. certain sections, and she beat it, and then and I forgot in the first one you don't, like, you can't go back and play more. Did you guys beat like, Tears just, of the Kingdom? You just end it. No. No. So she started a new game, and she's already, like, 75% of the way through. So next is Celeste, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna buy a new tv just saying no or the second one was on sale so i bought it so she'll she oh, when she gets yeah. back from grandpa and grandma's house she can play start it will of the wisps nice so oh you don't have game pass right now no i haven't had game pass in like a year or more what are you using for online all of the destiny's all, all of the games i play are free to play so they're oh, that's right they have yeah. multiplayer unlocked that's right Shout out to Destiny for making I had the to base buy, game free to play so I have <laughs> Xbox Live. Right. I did buy PS Plus for a while to play Helldivers, but I've let that. Yeah. I forgot elapse. to cancel mine. And I do it the year. What did Oh, so, so you it like came out year. like the other day. I was like, shoot. Oh. But hey, I get free games for a year. So whatever. I guess that's true. Maybe I'll get Concord for free. There you go. Probably at some hey, point. Hey, here's a multiplayer game that maybe I don't know if you beat it or not. Back for Blood? Did you ever beat that? No. Did I ever play that? Yeah, we played it together. Yeah, we played. I cannot remember that game. And Speed? Oh, yes. I do remember that one. Is this your was it, zo- it was Zombies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. the Left for Dead yes. reboot. Yeah, that was fun for a night. A <laughs> couple nights. I didn't beat it either. I just played it that one night. <laughs> It, it was it was on Gate Pass three. Yeah, I. Uh... Mm. 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 I mean, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. <laughs> Technically multiplayer. <laughs> Technically, yeah. No, Tyler doesn't count. It's a multiplayer game. <laughs> Y'all should fight. Naked. Uh, I mean, whoa. In a mud pit. If we had to answer the underrated thing that I think people should play, Morals of Avion, I'd put that in mm. there. I thought that game was really fun, even I remember though it's not, e- like, breath... It's, it's not gonna blow your mind with its story, but it's fun. I would put Assassin's Creed Mirage there. Very akin to the older Assassin's Creed games. Mm. That's one I've played and didn't beat. Yeah, see? How I wasn't, dare I wasn't he he's a loser. No, like I me. wasn't discrediting that you've played it. I thought you would. Pl- I thought you'd only played Alan Wake like an hour, and then you were like, "Yeah, no. I didn't like it." No. And then you were like putting it on your list. I, I like, actually what? enjoyed that guy. Like uh, you again. walked through the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Were you? Uh, were, had you played it as Alan? You played it as, yeah. as Alan. Yeah. Yeah. I played like a quarter of it. Dude. I understand like the base mechanic, like all of the base. Me- I mean, assuming they don't bring something in like at the midway point that just completely flips on heads, which it could. What I'm saying is, I have a I have a good sense of what the game is, and I enjoy it. There are two parts in that game I would love to watch you play. One is the hotel. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the hotel's like the hardest part of the game to me. It's probably the scariest too. 
Well, the, the uh, opening. The, I think the nursing home is terrifying. Oh, I'm like, gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. The nursing home is like. I think I like, blocked it from my mind because the nursing so home is like legit scary. Dude, like, that old lady. Just, yes, dude. When, when you're like not even in the scary part yet, she's just in the window. And she's like, oh, it's an old lady. Oh, my God. <laughs> dude, the, the nursing home scared me so good. So good. The hotel is mainly gory. I yeah, guess. and it has like the combat in that game is kind of hard, just in general. Um, not for not, me. Not to do. Put that sucker on easy. But to kill stuff, it's kind of challenging on the harder difficulty. And like, there's a room in the hotel where you have to kill like thirty things, and you have no weapons, yeah. and you're like, ah. <laughs> gotta run around until the game's like, oh, you need ammo. <laughs> I was like, please show up, Jesse Faden, and save me. Heck, I'll take his brother. Her brother. I think anybody with superpowers. All right. Well, good conversation. Real quick before we head off for the night. Nice hostile conversation. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm used to being the target at this point. Um, wait for having a target on my back. What? Uh, you guys do anything this week that else that's worth mentioning? I went on vacation. Fun. That and... sounds awesome. We went down to Broken Bow, Oklahoma, and we stayed in a cabin with Lepke, friend of the show, and uh, his wife and their kids, and we had all the kids there. We uh, had another friend of ours named Josh and his wife, Delena, and uh, Broken Bow is kind of like a less busy version of um, Branson, kind of. like It's like very family-oriented, family-friendly stuff to do. The cabin was super nice. Um... We had a great time. I will not say where I was, but I will say that while I was waiting for a turn, uh, there was a gentleman standing to kind of my left, and I kind of looked at him, and I was like, this is going to lead into my next thing here. Yeah. It's kind of like, huh, that guy looks like Quinn Ewers, which is the starting quarterback at Texas, who happens to be the cover athlete of EA Sports College Football 25. And I was just kind of staring at him, and then I was like, I'm pretty sure that's him. So I pull up his Instagram, and I look at a picture, and I'm like, yeah, either that's him, or he's got a twin. <laughs> and then I'm looking at a picture of him and his girlfriend, and his girlfriend walks up. And I was like, yep, that's that's them. So I was, uh, he was in Broken Bow, and I was there, and I ran across him. I didn't say anything to him. I didn't want to bother him. I didn't want to draw attention to him. Um, it looked like he was. How un-American of you. <laughs> it looked like he was kind of you know doing his own thing and, and didn't really like want to be recognized um and so i tried to be respectful of that it was really cool when when i did get to do my turn and the thing i was doing um i asked some of the, the people that were there uh how he was and they were like hey he's, he's a super nice dude i had no idea who he was and i was like yeah well, starting quarterback for texas probably gonna be a top 10 pick in the nfl draft next year just chilling next to you guys, hanging out, shooting just the breeze. Just hanging out. Just being a dude, drinking a Miller Lite. Uh, and I just yeah. thought that was really cool. So shout out to Quinn Ewers for not being all Hollywood. He'll never see this. Hollywood. But he was being a very polite young man. You think we can get him Good on the him. show? No. <laughs> um, but that leads to the next thing I've been doing is just playing EA Sports College Football 25. Kind of talked about it earlier. Um, it's not perfect. There's definitely some things they need to fix, uh, especially as it pertains to Dynasty Mode and their sim engine is kind of messed up. Um, it's got like your Alabamas and Georgias losing to D one AA schools randomly and stuff like that. It just never happens. Dude, do you believe in miracles or not? I do, but those miracles don't happen every season. That's that's they they aren't miracles in that game. So uh, they're a common occurrence. Yeah, they happen often. All the uh, waters, oh, the water turned to wine again. <laughs> the uh, the ranking system's kind of jacked up. Like I told you, I'm at K State now and. I'm second in the country five games into the year. Um, and I've beat some really good teams, but like the jumping, you just jump so high so fast. Um, I was ranked fourth with North Texas, and I didn't. I played one ranked <laughs> opponent the whole season. So it's like there's just some weird things like that that they need to iron out. There's some bugs in the recruiting system, which I think they – I found a workaround, and I've told some people workarounds for them who've asked. But um, all that to say, I'm having a really good time. Um, the game has kind of impacted my enjoyment of other things quite a bit as well. Um, I struggle to listen to like a gaming podcast I used to listen to all the time now because 
I just don't care about any of the games you're talking about. <laughs> like, all I can think about is playing eSports College Football 25. So. And they didn't play it, so they're probably not talking about it. They did play it. Um, they did, like, a tailgate stream and everything for it. It was oh, kind of okay. funny, uh, which oh. was it was really cool. But they talk about, like, all these previews they get to do in these games and stuff. And I'm like, I don't – like, I don't care about a vowed – they like, always have to stay relevant. Exactly. Like, they can't so linger they on move one on thing. Real quick. And so, like, it's it's kind of messing up my enjoyment of, like, my normal routine. Um, I've stayed up way too late, too many nights already. Oh, yeah, baby. Welcome to my life. But, man, it feels good to have it back. Um, and I just can't wait for the next time I sit down to play it. Like, it just, it's all I Here in, like, 20 minutes? Maybe. I was thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! After we beat up Brett in the driveway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. But yeah, that's what I've been doing, man. I, I just, again, it just feels so good to have it back. Uh, I love hearing the the fight songs and the drum lines and the the crowds chanting and like I've heard the Wabash cannonball thing like a bazillion times. Yeah, just endlessly, and I score a lot of touchdowns. Dude, we played that at Tabor so much. Yeah. Also, uh, because I got to K-State in year three of my dynasty, I have Avery Johnson as my starting really? quarterback. Yeah. We're in the Heisman race right now, baby. <laughs> yeah, he's, I should text my cousin because he played on the same team. He's really good basketball. in the game. I have him and Dylan Edwards, the kid from Derby. They're my two best players on offense. That's crazy. Yeah. They're both seniors, so I'm trying to recruit. <laughs> trying to recruit to replace buddy <laughs> please 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 i gotta find some new players i got a guy named uh boogie from south carolina coming in he's a quarterback i'm hoping he's good <laughs> but like that's what makes these games so fun is like in the nfl it's the same guys are always the top guys and in a game like this like every four years it's like a whole new group of players at the top end of the the country so it just makes it really fun so does the like computer just it just spits out yeah gener- AI generates players yep. so they have it like on an algorithm where like there's only X amount of five star players and four stars and they they kind of adjust things accordingly and like some years will be really strong for this position and it kind of like rotates through which positions will be strong but uh, yeah the names are hilarious uh, if you look around on tw- I'll send you some when I see them on Twitter this week but um, there's some really good ones. And there's some really bad ones, but... John, LeJohn, John, uh, Johnny John. I saw one the other day, it was just Juan Soto. Like, they're just like, yeah, it's just New York Yankees right fielder Juan Soto is also in the game. Um, AI was like, mm, that's a good name. Yeah. Write that one down. I gotta, if I can find them, I'll I'll stumble across them and I'll show you some. But that's what I've been doing. Sweet. Nice. Um, I did two things. Uh, the first thing that I did was my adventures with Superman finished this past week. <laughs> the first one, I see. Kevin Durant. <laughs> the Slim Reaper. What school? Uh, he was a recruit, so he's not going anywhere yet. He's got to go to Texas. That's where Kevin Durant went. BJ Good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Max Crosby. <laughs> no. <laughs> that dude's a two-star. Does that mean he sucks? There, there's another good one. <laughs> dude it just generates howie oh. roseman's in there oh my gosh anyway look at this russ westbrook <laughs> peter parker peter parker picked a pair oh, here's of here's a good one <laughs> <laughs> they're so good like i said okay. the dude i just recruited his name is boogie so boogie blame it on a boogie um okay where was what was i talking about my adventures with superman it finished. It was incredible. I think <laughs> I, I think season two is better than season one. Oh, I can't wait. I like who they introduce as a villain and kind of the My Adventures of Superman theme is to make everything technology based and Do they introduce the villain in the first episode? I don't remember. I don't th- I think it's like halfway through who it's like you could probably figure it out, but mm-hmm. when they actually say the name, so I won't ruin it. Yeah. But um, I loved it. I loved how they introduced Supergirl. It's very different than anything I've seen before. Um, that and I think the animation, so good, is so good, and I think it's even better this time because they went full anime with their fights. Nice. Like 
just thrown people around the world. It is awesome. Good. Dude. Um, it was a lot of fun. That show's fanboy worthy. If you enjoy Superman as a character, you should be watching that show. Or if so. you enjoy anime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I started, um, I've played, I don't know, a couple hours of Dungeons of Hindenburg. You were telling me you were going to play that. Yeah, it's a Austrian game on Game Pass right now. Um, and it's kind of like a indie version of Legend of Zelda. Um, what you, the Kind of how the story starts is you're this this girl who's a lawyer and you go on vacation to the alps because magic was discovered there and all these dungeons opened up and the thing to do there is go they call it slain you go you're like dungeon crawling you go through you stamp your dungeon book and there's like 30 of them and the goal is to do all the dungeons and you're the you're a real good slayer but then like in the evenings you go around town and you get to like hang out with a person and it boosts your stats or they give you something or, or you can even like go to the spa and it boosts your health. Um, so there's like little things you can do with that. And like, that's the gameplay loop. You wake up and you always talk to this person at the breakfast table. Then you just pick the dungeon, like the area you're going to go. You have to go find a dungeon or you can like go look at a waterfall. I'm like, that's what you do that day. Then you go back to town and you go explore the nightlife there, and you go to bed. And then the next day starts, and that's what you do every day. And it's it's like the, a mix of a cozy game and a dungeon crawler. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Like, when you're actually around swinging your sword and using power-ups, like, it's a, it's a fun action game. Um, and then the rest is, you know what it reminds me of? Celeste. Mm. Uh, yeah, because it is kind of that, like, bit it's, graphics, isn't it? it uh, it's more cell-shaded. Um, but it does have a particular art style. It, it it looks like if they would make Celeste into a 3D game. It's how I would picture it. But even just like the music and the way the characters talk. Like it's a text box and it's like... Mm. Um, it's, it is a beautiful game though. I love the art style of it. I think it looks really good. Um, and each like area you go to, you get new magical powers that help you unlock areas and yeah fight monsters it's i've done five dungeons um i've been having a lot of fun with it and it's not super hard which i like it's just a nice little puzzle it's like okay how do i get up there on that cliff i gotta go through this door and ride this cart and then go back and then hit this button it's a lot of fun fun little puzzles and then boss fight or you know like five enemies yeah. to fight here and there. But <laughs> nice. I've been enjoying it. Cool. So if you have Game Pass, I'd, I'd encourage you to check it out. I think it's a lot of fun. Nice. Awesome. Sweet. Very cool. Plus, um, support indie studio. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I am deep in pre-production on our next short film. So that's pretty much all I've been dedicating extra time to is getting that. Um, I don't know. The Thing ball, moving. the ball has been slowly rolling and it's picking up speed. We're about two weeks from uh, going out and doing actual production, so very excited about that. Um, yeah, so it's been a, it's been a lot, but it's all good. So yeah, Excellent. more to share about that soon, hopefully. But party time! Party time! All right. Well, hey, it's uh, it's been an hour forty, so we should wrap this thing up. Thank you all for watching, joining us, Baroque, joining us today in the uh, in the Twitch stream Monday nights live at eight p.m. Central Time. Uh, but yeah, whether you watch us on YouTube after the fact or listen via the podcast, we appreciate you, and we hope you have a great week. Next week we will be back talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I gotta remember to actually see it. (laughs) (laughs) Until next week, we'll see ya. I slammed my elbow on the mic doing that. It kind of hurt.